a little different than most of them. This one's going to be their first in my Chad Tech series that I'm going to drop, be dropping over the next several months randomly. These videos are just that. They're tech videos. They're even more dry than normal. And uh, so if you're looking for something for entertainment, probably not the video for you on, on these Chad Tech. But if you want to learn something, you want to learn something about wiring in this case, then uh, continue to watch. And if you have questions, please post them in the comments. Uh, the purpose of these Chad Tech videos is not to be an all-inclusive, um, you know, this is the way it is for everything. These videos are just designed to be a general idea of uh, the way I do things. Just because I do it doesn't necessarily make it the right way to do it. So, But just an idea. Um, every car is a little different and the way everybody does things is just a little bit different. So keep that in mind as you watch this. Okay, today's video, I'm just going to focus on how I lay out universal wiring harnesses. And these general things that I talk about apply to all different kinds of cars. This is, happens to be on Paul's uh, rat rod wrecker so it's a little bit it's probably middle of the road as far as the complexity goes on a on a normal wiring harness so but you'll notice i'm in the house and this is because all i'm doing right now is writing out everything that i need for um for this wiring harness so this is probably the most important step of the harness uh, layouts I have a whole bunch of these books. They're cheap. Usually you can buy them for under a dollar a piece. And I just write right, write right on them uh, what it's for. Um, and then I keep all my notes in this. Um, sometimes on really big projects, I'll have two of them. One with notes and one with more technical type of stuff for helping me do the wiring diagram after the job's completed. So. I don't always do a diagram, but on some of these more complex deals, especially ones that are going to get used a lot, um, it does help to do a, a diagram, an as-built type of diagram after everything's done. Okay, so I'm going to go over all of the different uh, fused circuits, everything on, on this particular truck. So this one's going to also have a lot of lights. So this is over here on the auxiliary circuits. So that's why there's two columns. So I have 11 fuses on this particular box that Paul brought to me, which is just happens to be enough. I was a little worried I was gonna have to find a different fuse box for it, but it happens to work out. So here's, and this is a pretty typical setup here. So I'm gonna have the HVAC. So this one does have air conditioning. So we'll need a, a 25 amp circuit to run the blower and the AC compressor on this one. Um, Depending on your headlight switch, uh, you may need two circuits for lights, one for headlights, one for running lights. But on these old Chevys, they have a 20 amp circuit breaker in the headlight switch, so we don't need to fuse that. So that's why I've got this not applicable here. So the headlight fuse for this, um, for this particular fuse box is gonna go to running lights. Then we have turn signals, brake lights and hazard lights. I'm going to put those on the same circuit. That's pretty typical on GM stuff and that frees up some uh, uh, one more circuit for a couple of these other things. So probably a 15 amp will cover that. We got wipers and then this one does have power windows and um, you'll see that I've got a little note over here what I'm repurposing which fuse. So this says coil. So I'm going to use the coil fuse and I'll relabel the box. Then we have radio and then gauges, and then we'll have rugged radio and the intercom. I'll just tie that in with brake lights and hazard lights. So you combine the horn with the uh, power port. I'll probably put a couple of uh, USB ports in it for Paul so he has some auxiliary power there. So I'll combine those on the horn deal. And then this truck will also have a camera system. Use the electric fan uh, fuse for it. So doing, running through all the circuits needed is a really good thing to do before you buy a harness. So what we did here is kind of backwards, but I can make it work. It's a lot wiser to lay out what circuits you're going to need before you buy the harness. So you don't want to automatically go and buy the biggest fuse box that you can get because then you have a whole stack of extra wires and a huge fuse box to deal with. So it's just wise to buy what you need to begin with 
make sure it's well uh, thought out and uh, go from there so okay here's the harness that Paul brought me um, this one oops, turn it this way this one is from uh, painless uh, it's got 11 fuses this is the horn relay has a spot for the hazard flasher and the turn signal flasher so pretty standard stuff the wire that they send on these painless harnesses is really pretty good it's uh, looks like GXL so it's a polyethylene insulation so it'll take some temperature this is OE quality stuff um, really nice um, but also I don't nobody sponsors me on any of this so keep that in mind as I talk about all these different brands this is all from my personal experience nobody's paying me to do any of this or anything like that so but also American Auto Wire makes a pretty good harness they have several different options as does painless um, I've even bought some from um, Summit or Speedway even Amazon and eBay some of those have been pretty good too so it's a little bit of a hit and miss um, usually on Amazon you're pretty safe because you can read the reviews of what people are saying so but they all pretty much seem to use that same polyethylene wire you don't want to use any of the PVC or um, cheaper plasticky type insulation because it will not hold up to the heat and it's not near as flexible or as easy to, to deal with so um, but the other nice thing about most of these harnesses is they label everything what each circuit is it's all printed some of them will just print them with ink others will uh, will hot stamp them so it's like it says just put a um, like a brand on it so it's actually into the uh, insulation so you don't have to worry about the, the ink rubbing off and that's kind of personal preference on that so uh, okay so now that we got the harness laid out or know what we need as far as harness we need to go through and start figuring out where all these wires are going to go um, I like to same thing sit down figure out where everything's going to go just take your page out of your notebook and go jot down everything that's inside of the in the interior so we're just going to focus on what's in the interior all the different switches and components and uh, lay out everything that need where it needs to go so um, I've got this road out and I'll go through it and uh, I'll show you okay so on this one and again this is pretty uh, standard so this is my interior page so everything on here will be inside the cab of this truck but again real similar to most any car so I have the gauges so this is the different wires we'll need to the gauges so we need a ground the running light or the dash light uh, ignition positive right turn left turn high beam coolant temperature sensor tack fuel gauge trans temperature sender and oil pressure sender You'll probably notice in there isn't any wire colors wrote down yet, and there isn't any wire sizes. We'll do that later. So we got to keep this so we're not completely overwhelmed, so we just got to break it down into one by one. This is the trick to make it manageable, otherwise you're going to end up in the corner uh, rocking yourself to sleep. So, okay. So on the radio, we got wires for that. We're going to need the ignition, and that's going to come from the radio fuse. Uh, battery plus... We're going to tee that off of the hazard and then a ground instead of grounding this to the to actual ground we're going to send a wire back to where the amps are so that the amps and the radio are grounded together so we don't have ground loop issues then over to the hvac we got ignition power and then we need a battery plus to power the relay for the blower relay and then we'll need a light dash light to go to the heater controls so this one's going to have rugged radio same thing battery plus we're going to go to the hazard and the ground and then the camera system ignition plus and that was going to go to camera system that was going to go to the electric fan fuse again you can see right there so we'll just repurpose that and then i'll just relabel it and then just a ground on that headlight switch so we'll need uh Battery plus that's going to go to the headlights 
uh, portion of the switch. Remember that one had a circuit breaker in it, so we don't need to fuse it, so it says unfused. Um, and then we'll need uh, another battery power that's the running lamp fuse that runs the running lamps, and then an output to the running lamp, probably front and rear on this one. The dash lights, this will be the headlamp to the dimmer switch on the floor for high beam, low beam, and then our courtesy lamps, and that's a ground signal that turns the courtesy lamps on. Um, and then with the same thing with the wiper switch, brake switch, and then we have our dimmer switch down on the floor. And then we have the doors. This one's going to have power door locks and power uh, power windows. So this is the powers that we, we're going to need to that. And then we'll also need, I haven't sat down with this one yet to figure out how many wires go to e between each door. So I need to figure that out. So that's why these brackets are empty. I need to get that figured out still. And then the, got the turn signal switch. So wire to the hazard, flasher, a turn flasher, to left rear, right rear, left front, right front, and then the brake switch input. Back over to our auxiliary circuit. So being that this has a whole bunch of lights, we're gonna actually have another auxiliary fuse box and switch panel for it. So it's all gonna be standalone. And I recommend that you do that just because um, you can overload your normal fuse box by putting all of these loads on it. So it's better to have it this way, have a separate box with your relays and everything all tied together um, to keep the load separated. Because if this burns up, it's not as big a deal as if this burns up and kills all of this, then you're walking. And also having this separate will um, make it a lot easier to diagnose down the road. Okay, so the next thing you gotta lay out, so you know roughly what's going where on the interior on this page we talked about. And uh, now we need to look at what uh, wires are gonna go other places in the on the truck or the car, wherever the case may be. So this one will have an engine harness because it does have the uh, fuel injection. And so I need to add some stuff to that harness because I like to have all my connections on one harness for that for that engine harness so we don't have a separate wires running every which direction. So this makes it look OE, thought out, and it makes for a nice clean install. So we've got a coolant temperature wire that needs to be added, oil pressure sensor. This one has a lot of air conditioning and then it also has an air compressor for onboard air. So we'll need to add those wires to it. Transmission temperature, tachometer, and then normally you would add another wire to, to uh, turn the alternator on. But this one, since it has an onboard welder, this alternator wire will go to the to the welder stuff. So it won't actually be in the engine harness on this particular deal, but most cars will have that. Okay, now things will this is the part where things can get just a little bit tricky. And because you know all of this is just a little bit tricky, you need to have a nice quiet place, take your time, think about it. This next step I recommend you do in pencil and that is figuring out what wire color is going to go to each. Probably first, if your wiring harness has got good instructions in it, look at those instructions and diagrams. Get yourself familiar with what color does what. Um, it also doesn't hurt to have a, um, if you can get a diagram of how your car was wired originally, that may also kind of straighten things out a little bit for you so you can have a better mental picture where each individual wire goes. Again. We're dealing with individual wires. We're not dealing with a harness. Think one thing at a time. Always think one thing at a time. Otherwise, you're going to make yourself crazy. So one wire at a time, and we're going to write down what wire color goes to what. And again, it's best to use pencil. I use pen for all of this other stuff, but go to a pencil. That way, if you catch you have a mistake, then you can just erase it, rewrite it, and that keeps your notes nice and tidy. You don't confuse yourself when you actually go to lay wires out. So that'll be the, the next step. I'll kind of show you what's gonna go where, and if you have to add a circuit or add a separate wire, you need to figure that out at this point too. So that way, before you start building any part of your harness, you can know what you need to buy. Like I told you before, it's best to have this harness built on paper 
before you really buy anything. It'll save you a lot of time and it'll save you a lot of frustration. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this engine harness. Write down what colors are gonna be and what gauge size it's gonna be. And if I need to make any specific notes on where that wire is gonna go, then I'll also add it now as well, so. Okay, so on this engine harness, um, I know I need to add coolant temp, so I usually make that green, light green, and that can be a 20 gauge wire. Oil pressure, we can make that one brown. That one will also be a 20 gauge. AC compressor, since this is a GM factory system we're using, we're gonna make this one dark green. And that one should probably be a 16 gauge. If you were doing a vintage air or something, their compressor wires are usually blue on those, so I, I would change it to blue. On this air compressor, we'll make that one. Doesn't really matter since it's an auxiliary circuit, so it just needs to be something that you can remember and a wire that probably isn't gonna be used on anything else. So on this one, we'll make this one tan. And again, probably a 16 gauge. 18 gauge would probably work too, but I kinda like to err on the, on the higher side on it just because. Transmission temperature, I think I've got a tan with a black tracer I'll use on that one. And that, again, that can be 20 gauge. Attack will make white and it's a 20. And then the alternator, those are normally white as well, but I like to make those bigger. So either 16 to 18 gauge. So that way there'll be a difference in size between this wire and that wire. Okay. So all that's done, these wires need to be added into the engine harness. All right, that's it for, the, for this video. Uh, as you can tell, it's not a complete video. I'll be adding more. I'll be adding a video on terminals and connectors, crimpers and tools. I'll be adding a video for the um, the layout of the dash harness and then another video on layout of the engine harness to help tie all this stuff together. I'm trying to keep these videos under about 20-ish minutes, 25 minutes at the most, so they're digestible and they're manageable. Uh, be patient with me. I've already got a lot of these videos uh, shot, but it just takes time to edit them and get them posted as well. So, till next time. Uh, remember that every moment is a new beginning. It's never too late to start over if you feel the need. Thanks for watching.